the whole point of the pod. <laughs> It's not well. I mean, if all we were doing was reading this essay for the podcast, then I mean, then basically I should just post a uh, an audio recording <laughs> called "Politics in English Language," yeah, read by Greg, right? So that's fair. Um, do you want to read this next one? Um, sure. Now it is clear that the decline of language must ultimately have political and economic causes. It is not due simply to the bad influence of this or that individual writer, but in effect can become a cause, reinforcing the original cause and producing the same effect in an intensified form, and so on indefinitely. A man may take to drink because he feels himself to be a failure, and then fail all the more completely because he drinks. It is rather the same thing that is happening to the English language. It becomes ugly and in inaccurate because our thoughts are foolish, but the slow slovenliness of our language makes it easier for us to have foolish thoughts. The point is that the process is reversible. Modern English, especially written English, is full of bad habits with which spread by imitation and which can be avoided if one is willing to take the necessary trouble. If one gets rid of these habits, one can think more clearly. And to think clearly is a necessary first step toward political regeneration, so that the fight against bad English is not frivolous and is not the exclusive concern of professional writers. I will come back to this presently, and I hope that by that time the meaning of what I have said here will have become clearer. Meanwhile, here are five specimens of the English language as it is now habitually written. Yeah. Should so I like that. Now, yeah, the uh, the thing that really stood out to me is where is it? A man may take to drink because he feels himself to be a failure, then fail all the more completely because he drinks. Mm -hmm. It's rather the same thing that has happened to the English language. It becomes ugly and accurate because our thoughts are foolish, but the slowness of our language makes it easy for us to have foolish thoughts. Right. There's so much of that that is true, just like in general, how things become vicious cycles. Yeah. Where one thing creates the other, but it's like a catch-22, so it's kind of hard to tell um, what is creating what. Like, yeah. like, for example, with depression, a chemical imbalance in the brain causing um, depression, and so then you you stop taking action and you sort of get in this hole Take pills or is or is it the fact that you haven't been taking action and doing this and that that you start to have that chemical imbalance so i i like that and this reminds me of how in high school when texting was starting to become more mainstream as in like me and all my friends and most people in high school had yeah a phone and we're texting and <clears throat> I would LOL. use, yeah, and I would use that language a lot. And I still use like LOL, LOL or whatever, but I would start to um, spell out the word you as just you, like how people did yeah. um, and, and shorten words. But for for whatever reason, in the last couple of years, I was like, I, I wanted to be more sophisticated with how I use language, even in text. Okay. So for for whatever reason, I made it a point to always spell out the word you, um, in mm -hmm. that kind of or are, mm -hmm. or yeah, are because I feel like it goes along with this is like you're wanting to shorten it, but then you and the it it kind of changes the meaning of your sentence and your thought almost when you don't even take the time to like spell a basic word out. No, I agree. And especially, I mean, LOL, like no one's actually laughing out loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when you do, you like type back, dude, I actually laughed out loud. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. LOL has just become my way of like responding oh. to someone if I don't. Like there's just no, it's like my way of acknowledging I, I've seen the message, basically. <laughs> like, I don't know if I do that to you specifically as well. But just like if you type something and I'm like, LOL, it's just, oh, I've seen, I've seen it. <laughs> red, red recipients, but 
No, it'd be cool if you could change the red recipients to say LOL instead. That way, like, it, it, instead of saying red, it just says LOL. Yeah. Well, it obviously depends on Why what are you they're texting saying, me back? too. LOL. E LOL, yeah. But I, I have a bad, it's not even a bad habit. I'm not going to say it if someone's like, yeah. oh, like, my grandma just passed away. LOL. Like, <laughs> 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 no. But it's um, just kind of like a filler. It's like, I don't know. I, I mean, well, I don't know if you use it the same way as I do. No, I do. I use LOL as a, as a filler and ha ha. And, uh, or it's just like saying, um, but over text. It's also just, it's not even LOL. It's also just like what you're saying is almost that you're smiling, mm -hmm. basically. Or I yeah. like that. That please, that text pleased me. A exactly. Little bit. It's like a positive acknowledgement that you read the test. Text. Yeah. And had yeah, like a it's, positive. It's positive acknowledgement. Yeah. yeah. And um, just like, oh, like I, I'm not taking you too seriously, but um, but I think all these things, uh, the the way that we use language and especially what uh, what Orwell is saying here is that it that our language is a reflection of the way that we think. Mm -hmm. And if if we begin talking in such a way that it's misleading or it's not really conveying what we're saying in a good way, then that can cause us to be misleading or have us to be think to think in ways that are misleading or right. think in ways that are stupid. Right. Well, and also that our thoughts are limited to the language we have to express them. Yes. So yes, if yes. our language becomes dumbed down, we will we won't be able to think as expansively. And the way I think about this is like we have so many different words to express different emotions, like oh I'm anxious, which it or I'm jealous or I'm envious. And like to point out very specific differences between things, like being jealous and being envious are are two different things even though yeah. they are um but like if we just had um bad and good i'm feeling good mm -hmm. and i'm feeling bad like yep. we want to um be able to, be able to understand feel. yeah like because they've or shown feel. that people yeah because yeah, they've shown that people have who have less vocabulary to express their emotions because they don't know those words um yep. actually do in some cases like are limited in their emotional range like oh, their wow. ability to feel yeah to, uh, their ability to feel certain emotions because they don't know it's like a reality almost because they don't have the language well i i was listening to this podcast today and they're saying how humans have a unique capacity to understand and appreciate uh be beauty and I think a lot of that is our ability to explain it and our ability to talk about beauty and even have the word beauty. Yeah. That's so true. I feel like if we couldn't explain it to someone else or to ourselves, we, yeah. Like imagine if beautif beautiful wasn't a word. Yeah. And you just like see this I don't know, like this fantastic sunset. I don't know. If you just like don't have the words. To describe it, then you might not like you'll. Well, it's not that you won't feel it. It just right. you won't be able to describe the feeling. Right. That you would have probably sense? the experience. Yeah. You would have this like. Ex yeah. I don't know. Like you might still feel the Wow. But you won't mm -hmm. be able to describe why it's wow, you know? Mm -hmm. Or if you get, like, a dog understands, like, when you smack a dog in the butt, it understands that it did something wrong. Right. Right. Or at least it understands that what it did is associated with getting smacked in the butt. So, it uh, it doesn't understand, like, why it got slapped in the butt or why the thing that it did is associated with getting smacked in the butt, but it knows it can at least associate those 
two things and it can still feel the feeling of the pain. Yeah, I guess, I mean, the in a way, the language, kind of like what you're saying, language makes an experience more recallable. Yeah, yeah, like, it, it's recallable. Like, yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it brings it to your conscious awareness. Because it gets, like, encoded better if you have a way yep. to describe it. Yeah, it, it's like, well, I was just trying to explain the other day about how I, I was saying, man, I there are some times today where I just wasn't thinking, but then I realized, well, I would only notice that I wasn't thinking whenever I'm thinking. So how do I know times that I wasn't thinking? <laughs> like, you know <laughs> I mean? Yeah. Right. Well, so basically the, the summary of that paragraph was yeah. Language follows or that, allowing language to sort of disintegrate is a choice and it is reversible. Yeah. And la like language can become lazy. And so our thoughts be can become, become lazy, lazy and foolish, but that is like within our control to allow that to happen by the way we use language is kind of what I got from that. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. Um, and I think our short, I mean, using, you know, LOL and these short, uh, what's the word for it? I guess short, shortened phrases or whatever is, mm -hmm. I mean, that's indicative of our likewise short attention span as a culture. Oh, a hundred percent. Like you think about how on YouTube, and like watching movies and stuff, the content we used to consume was longer yeah. format. And then Vine, and then Vine came out, or whatever TikTok. else. TikTok. And because it came out, our attention span is now shorter, because we got used to that, um, shorter form things. And now TikTok and the YouTube and Facebook Shorts are now, like, what take up a lot of our time. Be but it's because it wasn't like that at first. It wasn't that we had a short attention span. And so we were always making the short form content. The content came first and then our attention span like adapted in a negative way. I don't, how do you, um, negative adaptation to that. Yeah, like a maladaptation. Maladaptation, yeah. Well, it's also interesting because uh, when you think about podcasts, you know, a lot of people listening to this, they're probably listening to it while they're doing something else, like they're driving or they're mm -hmm. uh, at the gym, they're at work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, no one's just like sitting, doing nothing, listening to a podcast, at least I would assume. Right. Because um, it's so, hard. You want to. Yeah. <laughs> like, I rarely even watch a YouTube video without. I'll actually put on a YouTube video and, and game while yeah. listening to the whole thing because it's like this um, it's background noise mm -hmm. it's just like well how many how many times do you even just eat like with you and your girlfriend and not like have something on the background 